glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence. Hallelujah. Gracious God, our Father, Lord, I thank you for this day you have created. Thank you for the opportunity, O oh God, to teach your word once again. I thank you, Lord God, for the revelation, knowledge, understanding that we receive from the Holy Spirit, O oh God, that will help guide, direct us in the way of truth and the way of righteousness, O oh God. Purify our hearts, O oh God, and our attitude. Let it be changed by the Spirit living God today, O oh God, that we not allow flesh to be aroused, O oh God, to cause us to sin against you. We ask, O oh Father God, that you would help us to stand fast in liberty Christ made us free. I thank you, Lord God, for the victory in Christ Jesus. We ask, O oh God, that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness according to your word. If we confess our sins, you're faithful, just forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We thank you for the cleansing blood of the Lamb right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, have your way in our lives, O oh God. Help us to stand fast in liberty of the word of God, knowing that Christ paid the price for our redemption, that we can live free. Moral agents in Christ Jesus. We ask that you would be glorified and exalted. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're going to continue in our book tonight, Breaking the Threefold Demonic Court. How to Desire and Defeat the Lies of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Delilah. How to Desire and Defeat the Lies of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Delilah. Amen. I pray that you all had a blessed day. Whoever comes on to hear this word tonight, even those who may hear it later on at a later time, I pray that it be enriching to your spirit to empower you, to help stir you up in, your, in the faith of Jesus Christ, give you the strength to endure persecution, the challenges that you face in your daily life, that you continue to walk by faith and not by sight into the promises of God's word, that he will get the glory out of your life Amen. We're living in a time where there's so much tragedy going on in our world, in our land today, and we have to really allow the Spirit of God to perfect us, to help us to stand fast in the faith of Jesus Christ. Truly, God is great, and His mercy endures forever. Amen. So tonight, we're going to be in our book. On the Kindle version, page 72, I forgot what the page is in the regular book, but if you got the book, the same book we've been studying in for the last few months, we're going to continue in this book tonight, and we believe in God that we're getting understanding of how important it is to recognize the Jezebel spirit that influences and controls our lives and the lives of those around us, and that we're learning how to live and abide in the freedom that Christ has provided on the cross to give us access to come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and help in a time of need. We're living in the perilous times and we're hearing of so many malicious things taking place in our land and our country. I just uh, listened to a video today, a news report of how this young man plotted against a, a preacher and he killed the preacher in uh, Atlanta. I tell, it's just so much happening that just a few weeks ago, we just actually a week ago, we've been hearing about a young lady who was dismembered after dating and meeting a guy on Facebook and dated the guy and and he ended up killing her. It's just so much tragedy in the land. And we have to pray, pray, pray until changes take place in our nation, in our cities, our communities, and our homes. So many people are bound by demonic influence and don't know how to be free. But we know that God has the power and the ability to break every stronghold, every shackle, every lie of the devil in our lives, to strip it from our minds and give us the mind of Christ to be influenced and be guided and controlled by the Holy Spirit. Amen. We talked about a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't able to come on last week because I was having a lot of severe pain and high blood pressure. But I thank God for healing because I never stop believing. I never stop reading the word. I read the word every day because I believe the word has power and it does manifest. I've been in ministry going on 40 years and God has not failed me yet and never will. And I tell you, when you study God's word, you're going to see yourself in areas that need to be changed, areas that need to be perfected, areas that need to be challenged. You find yourself facing in the mirror of the word of God and expose things in your life that need to be purged out. 
But sometimes we get into a place like the children of Israel we talked about a couple of weeks ago, stiff neck and rebellious. And that stiff neck is that haughty heart, that prideful heart, that arrogant heart. You know the right thing to do, but you refuse to do it. And God is saying, according to his word, that we have to recognize the enemy when he comes against us and stand on the word of truth, knowing that God has the power to break every stronghold in our lives. It's very important as a child of God to study, to show yourself approved unto God, a work that need not to be ashamed, but rightly divide the word of truth. Because it's the word that has the power to change your situation and change your life for the better. But you got to want it. You got to want to do better. You got to want to live better. You got to want to walk right in the presence of God and not the spirit of God to purify you every day to make you just like Christ and the outward expression of him in the earth through the power of the Holy Spirit. Tonight we're going to talk about Bell wants it now. Bell wants it now. We talked about Ethbel, which was um, Jezebel's father, who was an idol worshiper. We talked about that, how she followed after the same characteristics and nature of her father. And then her daughter mimics and exemplifies her character and her life. And, and then her daughter, the daughter's daughter, walks in the same spirit and it's an unclean spirit that controls the mind and is a mind binding spirit that introduces a death structure in your life to destroy you we have to really pay attention people because the enemy is creeping into churches you got a lot of people that come into the house of god with a takeover spirit they want to take over your position they want to do what you can do for they can do it better we talked about this in previous lessons how you got people who feel that why God called you, I can do what you're doing, even better than what you're doing. I can preach better than you. I can sing better than you do. I can, I can exhort better than you can. I can prophesy better than you can. So they have a jealousy spirit that spurns from the spirit of Jezebel. And that spirit, it violates the heart of God's people to bring corruption and confusion in the house. We got to pray against the spirit of Jezebel. You might be one of those that's been operating in that spirit and God is trying to get your attention to pay attention to how you're behaving, how you're responding, how you're acting immature and acting like a baby and still whining and complaining and gossiping and backbiting, spreading poison in the body of Christ. You might be that individual. God is trying to get your attention. Because if you don't wake up, pride goes before destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. And I mean, it would be a great fall. It's a, it's a great fall where you lose everything you have attached to your life. You lose your marriage. You lose your relationship. You lose your family. You lose your finances. You lose your job. You get into a place of bankrupt where you have to live in the streets because you rebelled against God. Rebellion is a very strong spirit that will destroy your life like an atomic bomb. And the enemy will come in and it's Stealth mode, undetected, like he did with Edom, Eve, in the, Eve in the Garden of Eden. He came in stealth mode. He came in a way to violate her life. To jeopardize their relationship with God and cause them to rebel against God and sin against God and got expelled from the Garden of Eden. So it caused them to lose their eternal right. They were placed in a very great wealthy position. They were entitled to anything they wanted in the world. God said, everything in the garden is yours. You can have it all. And they got to the place where they listened to the voice of the enemy. And the enemy deceived them, manipulated. So he manipulated her to manipulate her husband to get them to believe in a lie. And a lie caused them their eternal position and kicked them out of the garden of Eden to where they now have to live in a dead state of carnality, a human standpoint of life where anything can happen to you can happen. Before they sinned in the garden, 
There was no sin in the world. But by this one man, Adam, the word says, sin was brought to the whole world. But through Jesus Christ, he brought us great life and deliverance through the power of the blood of the Lamb. Amen. So we're going to move forward tonight into our lesson. I pray that you're ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get your antennas frequency set on heaven's frequency where you can hear from the voice of God on his radio signal to speak into your ears and begin to give you a rhema word to help shape your future and your destiny. Even change where you're going right now. Your direction, your direction and the projection of your mind that we perceive yourself. God wants you to see what he sees and hear what he hears. Amen. There's a book. I've been reading, let me see if I can pull it up on my computer, because this was really a good book. And it's um it's called God's Eye View. God's Eye View. God's Eye View. And God's Eye View is something that we really have to pay attention to because God's Eye View is 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 different from what we can perceive in a natural standpoint of, of human mindset. And one thing it talks about is about worship. Worship is so powerful. And the enemy knows that when you get into the place of worship, it releases you into the will of God and releases God's promises into your life. The enemy knows it, and he knows what to do and how to distract you and get you to a place of pride and arrogancy and haughtiness, rebellion, stubbornness. Let me see if I can find while I was reading. Now, this was really a good point. I want to talk about... I had it earlier. I'm always doing something on this book. Cause I, so I lost my page, but I had. But this was really good. Because it's talking about how I was telling the enemy that... The Lord spoke a word to Eve that she's going to bruise his head and he will bruise her heel. Talking about the son of God, her child that will be born. And the enemy, he hates it when we get to the place we hear God speaking. Okay, here it is. It says worship. I'm going to look a little up a little bit more than this. It says anyone should have a nightmare about the end times. It isn't your father. The creator of the cosmos hasn't spent a single feverish second struggling to figure out how he will finance your future. He isn't worried about how much they're going to give him at the celestial pawn shop for his heavenly throne. You hear that? Pawn shop. So, like referring to the natural pawn shop, when you take all the stuff, you need some money, so you go pawn it off to get some quick cash. So, God ain't worried about that. I doubt that he is worried about anything that worries you and the things that you worry about. He ain't concerned about none of that. Worship permits you to see things as your heavenly father sees them. It lifts you from the pit of humanity's problems to a higher and a pure perspective from the deceit of divinity. The power of worship perspective is accessed through worship. The, the higher power perspective, perspective is assessed through worship. Worship will lift your spirit. Worship will change your destiny. Worship will rearrange your future. That is so awesome. That's a powerful statement because worship is sets you in the atmosphere where now you're dwelling in God's presence and nothing else can come against you to distract you. You're not easily deceived by the enemy anymore. When you get into a place of worship, you cause God to lift an ambush against the enemy. You cause the standard to be lifted. And when I read this, I said, wow, this is so amazing because I love to be in a place of worship. I found out when I, I'm afflicted in my body or I got trouble on my mind and burdens on my shoulders, I can go into a place where God will hear me. I can get into a quiet place. Turn off the phone, turn off the radio, turn off the computer. Don't answer the door. Just get to that secret place. The word said when you enter to your secret closet, you read that in Matthew chapter 6. Read the whole chapter. 
when you go into your secret closet and you pray to the Father in secret, it says he will reward thee openly. That's how much God loves you. He, he's, he's in a place of intimacy in your quiet place. And worship permits you to release God into your situation, into your mindset, where the burdens and the troubles are weighing you down, to release it from you and give it to him to handle it. Worship not only that, but it builds your spiritual muscles when you get into that place, that secret place. I can hear God speaking when I get a rainbow word because God will lead you to the scriptures every time. When you spend time in prayer in God's presence, he'll take you to the word and you get a scripture. And that scripture will identify and give you a word of hope and encouragement that what you're dealing with, God got it. Here's another point. It says, run for your hard hats, boys. This is the enemy talking to his imps. Run for your hard hats, boys. The enemy of your soul doesn't want this truth uncovered. He don't want you to get a revelation about worship. He don't want you to know anything about worship. If he can deceive you, manipulate you, control you, blind you from getting to a place of intimacy with God, where God can get into you, you can get into him, he'll help you keep uncovered. He'll keep it covered where you won't see the truth. He don't want to uncover. He wants it covered. Your worship sets off hell's alarm bell. Do you believe that? When you start worshiping, the enemy hates worship because he was the chief worshiper. He was a musician in heaven. We take his place when we worship. And it sets an alarm against the enemy to know that, hey, God's children is worshiping again. And all the little demons shout, run for your hard hat, boys. You know how you work in a construction place or even in a factory, you have to wear a hard hat. Because if something falls, it'll hit the helmet that's guarding your head to keep from hurting you. If you don't wear a hard hat, when they tell you the requirements before you enter this area, you have to put on a hard hat or put on some steel toed boots. And you don't do it being rebellious, then something happens, you get hurt. Then be rushed out to the hospital because you did not follow the rules. Enemy hates it. See, his imps begin to say, run for the hard hats. The only being who should have a reincurring nightmare about the end times is Satan. The only one who should have an alarm and be afraid of the end time is the devil himself. Because his end time is in the lake of fire, burning for eternity forever. You and I are reigning with Christ forever in the heavenly places. The scripture tells us that God told Satan in his serpent costume, Eve and Eve, from now on, you, shall, you and the woman shall be enemies. And your offsprings and her offsprings will be enemies. You hear that? God warned the enemy about him and Eve are going to be enemies and the offspring is going to be enemies and her offspring is going to be enemies. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. No wonder Satan craves for a hard hat. Satan is intimidated by anyone who isn't afraid to bruise his heel in the process of crushing Satan's serpent-like head. The enemy is afraid of you. You should not allow the enemy to put you in terror, cause you to be fearful of things that's not in your power to control or change in your life. You need to be uh, taking authority and power over him. Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and of all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. You have the power of the Holy Spirit to crush the enemy under your feet. Yes, a heel bruise may make you limp, 
but a crushed head is fatal. Isn't that true? You go hit, hit your head on something hard and you fracture it. It can become fatal. It can kill you. Put you in a coma. Anything can happen if you hit your head. You can hit your head so hard it knock you unconscious. But a bruised heel, I might limp, but I still got my right mind. I'm still alert. I'm still on guard. And I'm still moving. Because it doesn't cripple me just because I have a limp in my heel. A bruise on my heel, shall I say. Listen to this. He cringes over the possibility that you may discover your God is bigger than every demonic image or schemes he conjures up. So we're talking about Baal, right? The Israelites were angered by Moses' absence. They did not understand the intensity of Moses' calling, nor did they fully know where Moses was when they desired his presence. And that, that's something, because when I read this, I thought about how the children of Israel followed Moses to the mountain. When Moses went to the mountain to meet with God, he told them he's going to speak with God. Was an indication they heard him but didn't listen. We do it all the time. We can receive instructions from anyone in our lives to do something for them or have them do something for us. Either they don't listen or I don't listen. I hear what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, but I'm not perceiving what you're saying because I'm not really paying attention to listen. When I listen to you, I intently have a desire to understand what it is exactly you're trying to communicate to me. God does the same thing with us as children. He communicates through his word and he's looking for us to be obedient, to have intently to hear. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the church. God is speaking to the church. Are you listening to me? But many times, what we do, we sit in church, hear a good message preached. We're not paying attention to the sermon, to the pastor get excited, start hooping and hollering and jumping around. Then I get excited. But when he was teaching me something, that can apply to my life to change me, to make me better, there was a resistance. And I pulled from hearing what he's talking about because I didn't want to hear it because he's talking about something in my life I'm not ready to let go of. I'm not ready to give up. My idol is planted in a place in my heart and I'm not ready to let it be knocked down. Oh my God. This is good. This is going to be good tonight, y'all. So it says, they did not understand Moses' absence. Didn't even understand his calling. Do you know your calling? Do you know what God called you to do? Do you understand the intensity and the magnitude of your calling that God placed on your life? Are you cherishing that calling and taking it to heart as value? Are you lackadaisically going through life, don't really care about your calling your life, so you still do what the world does. You go to the club, you still still indulge in alcohol to where you get drunk and, and all that stuff. You do the stuff the world does, and, and, and you don't care. You cuss folk out so you walk out of church. You spread gossip in the church. You backbite. You stab folk in their back. You, you curse people out in their face. You walk on people, you look over the poor, you hate on folk because you don't understand how they are, what they're doing, or what they said to you. So we get trapped in Satan's pitfall of despair and receive the attributes and the characteristics that come from his idol worship. Because the children of Israel, we're going to find out, were very offended 
Because Moses took too long to stay on the mountain talking to God. Anytime you have a shepherd that's placed over your life who's pouring into you the anointing, the word of God, and you opposing that word, you're allowing yourself to be empty. But yet you call yourself anointed. You're an empty cup with no anointing. And God wants to fill you with the anointing because the anointing releases the gifts of the Spirit. And the gifts of the Spirit empowers you to walk in your calling. Not only that, it defines your calling. To where you know what your calling is in spite of what people think and what they say about you. I can care less what people think about me. I know who I am, whose I am, and what God called me to do. I'm human like anybody else. Yes, I make mistakes. Yes, I sin. But thank God for surely goodness and mercy who follow me all the days of my life that so I can dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Even when I mess up, surely goodness and mercy still follows me. Glory to God. They're still there because God says my grace is sufficient in your weaknesses. My strength is made perfect. Woo, glory to God. I come to tell you tonight, you better wake up. Wake up, church. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Time is winding up. The word tells us that it said the, the day is gone, the night is far spent, and yet we're still not saved. In other words, you're not even trying to walk in your salvation or abide in Jesus' presence. He said, you abide in him, he abide in you. And that means he'll settle, he'll rest, he'll camp out inside of you. That you and him can live the life together in this world. That everywhere you go, Christ will be revealed. But he can't be revealed in a haughty heart. Going a little further. Offended, they assume the worst. Turning from God in his divine direction to bow to the evil influence of Baal. You hear that? God offended. Assumed Moses was dead. That's what he's talking about. They figured something must have happened to him on the mountain with God. That he died on the mountain. He ain't coming back. So they turn from God and his divine direction. We do it in our church. We turn from God in his direction because of sin in our lives. We, we don't value God's house. We, we come into God's pulpit. We come, come as musicians. We come as congregation. We done smoked our weed and drank our alcohol and did, did our drugs before we came in the house of God. And then we call ourselves a child of God, worshiping God with filthy hands. My God, my God. It's sad when we come into the house of God and do not value God's house is holy. Jesus had a problem with the people in the temple selling doves and money changers and doing all kind of stuff in the house of God. And he turned over the tables, kicked them out, and said he drove them out the temple. And said, my house should be called a house of prayer, not a den of thieves. We come into the house of God today as den of thieves because we're not valuing God's anointing. We're corrupting a holy place and perverting with our idol worship. Oh, my God. We got to get back to the place of prayer. Get back to consecration. Get back of surrenders. Come on back, God says. Come back to me. Say, break up your foul of ground. Don't wring your garments, but wring your hearts to me. And I will abundantly pardon your sins. God wants us to be cleansed. He wants us to be sanctified. He wants us to be filled with the Spirit of God where nothing else matters. I love that song I heard on the radio. It said, nothing else matters but you. Nothing else matters. Because we got to get to the place where we feel in our spirit that nothing else matters but serving God wholeheartedly. Mind, body, soul, will, emotion. Everything about you need to be surrendered to his lordship, his authority, because it's all about him being glorified. Wake up, church. Wake up, wake up, wake up. 
We got to wake up. God is not playing with us. Look at the world. I ran tech Israel. All these things are prophetic. The things that are happening in today's time have been spoken in the word of God. And it's starting to manifest because God wants to be aware that the end time is coming soon where Christ is going to appear. Will you meet him in the air? Or will he reject you? We got to wake up people of God and realize the life that I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me, gave his life for me, and now lives his life through me. Because the life that I live should be a surrender, sanctified, holy life. Be holy as I am holy, says the Lord. Let's go a little further. The spirit behind Baal insists that we who, who, who we want, let me read it again. The spirit behind Baal insists that we have who we want. When we want him. And that he do what we want. How many of you ever been into a church. Where the pastor was controlled by the board. Or the pastor controlled by his wife. Or the church was controlling that pastor. And they were saying we want who we want. We want him when we want him. We're going to do what we want to do. He don't do what we want. We're going to vote him out. This, this spirit is based upon performance rather than relationship. The enemy hates relationship because he hates togetherness because he knows when you come together that you're not easily broken or deceived from him because he knows that it's anointed on your life that's guarding you. But if he can distract you, deter you from your promised land, he can get you to a place of defeat. Let's go a little further. It says, today a similar thing occurs when a leader cannot immediately be available to the congregation. I'm reminded of, of the years I pastored a local church and some complained when I was unable to immediately return a phone call or meet them on the spur of the moment. Though, it, though I was legitimately unavailable at the time of the call, they wanted me right then. With multitudes of phone calls and emails, it is impossible to care for every need and expectation. This is something here because we have a pastor who's not always available. So what he does, some calls he can return when the moment presents itself, but then there's some things he cannot handle at the moment because he's either busy or working. And folk get mad at the pastor because he doesn't call them back. That's the reason why a lot of churches assign assistant pastors to work side with the pastor to handle the things he cannot handle in the church. But you got pastors who are selfish. You got a lot of pastors, God assistant pastor, and won't use them. Because they feel that they're so used to doing everything for themselves, they have to have all the responsibility, requirements of things to be done on themselves, and all the weight on themselves, the burdens on themselves, they have to do everything themselves for their ministry. That's selfishness. That's what we talked about last week, selfishness and rebellion. Because that spirit is selfishness and rebellion that settles in your heart according to the leadership of Jezebel. And it makes you feel that you don't need nobody else when you do. We do it ourselves. We need help with something. We're afraid to ask somebody else to help because we don't know too much about us. You might have a critical illness. Don't want anybody to know about it. But you need somebody to come aid you as a care worker. And it might be a friend that you get to come help you. 
but you don't want them to help you, but only to a certain degree, because I don't want them to ex see the exposure of what's really going on with me. You might be a crack addict, and you need help, but you're afraid to call on help. Because you got stuck in the cycle of your mind, which is a, a, a ritual of the enemy to keep you in bondage. God is saying tonight, we need to wake up and pay attention how we're being influenced by the spirit of Jezebel. The idol worship is Baal. Baal is a strong spirit that influences God's people, destroys relationships, and cause you to live and behave according to performance. So in other words, you put on the front. To act like you're really holy, to act like you're really serving God, to act like you're really ministering the way God was minister, all performance for brownie points. You may be the best singer in the world, but your heart is so filthy. You might be a minister of the gospel, might be a pastor, might be a prophet, might be an evangelist, might be a teacher. So it doesn't matter who you are. But your heart is filthy. God is saying tonight, let us draw near to God with hearts for the faith being washed clean from the evil conscience. And sprinkled with clean water. Because God wants to take the water of the Holy Spirit to wash that filthy heart. To take out that stony heart. Give you a heart of flesh after his spirit. But you cannot receive his heart if there's a wall of resistance that's preventing him from coming in, we do it all the time. We put a perimeter around ourselves because I don't want nobody to come into my perimeter. So I can hide all my secret sins and, and my treasure box in my heart and do what I want to do behind closed doors because they might see me. God sees everything you do and say. He says, I'm watching you. I know everything about you. Let's go on a little further. Immaturity in the body of Christ always, say that to yourself, always dictates that a person meet an immediate need rather than going in person to the real need meter Jesus. Ain't that something? We rather rely on humans than go to God. God is trying to draw us to him. If I have a need, he says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things shall be added unto you. Whatever your need is, but my God shall supply all my need. N-E-E-D. It didn't say S. It says need. That means there's an immediate need. I need God to fulfill in my life. God says he will fulfill that need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So we got to go to the need meter, which is Jesus. Stop running to people. Trying to rely on people to fill our need. God uses people to help fulfill your need. But he gives you wisdom to make the right decision when spending your money, go in certain places, do what you need to do, go to work. He gives you wisdom to create ideas to gravitate wealth to yourself. But you got to want it. God is not going to violate you. He's not going to force you. He's not going to twist your arm and say, you got to go out here and work. You got to go make some money so you can pay your bills. He ain't going to do none of that. He'll sit back. He'll take the the hedge from around you and let the enemy come in and pounce upon you and beat you till you can't think no more. And then you get to the recognition and realize I need to come back to God. That's what God is looking for. A heart that's yielded, a heart that's surrendered and yielded to him. Then he'll come in right when you need him the most and fulfill your need. I'm a living witness. Happens every time. Bell uses false accusation and lies. Mm, mm, mm. God have mercy. The same evil spirit preys upon a congregation with false accusation and lies. 
when a leader is absent and unable to defend himself or herself. You hear that? When a leader is absent and unable to defend himself or herself through the spirit of Jezebel, although the spirit of Jezebel has no gender, it mainly works through women. Unfortunately, women are more likely to gossip and have an idle tongue. I beg to differ on this statement, though, because I know some men who are worse than women, who love to be a talebearer and just gossip. They want to soak in all the good news about somebody's failure, about their mistakes, about their marriage, about their life, and they're going to spread it to everybody they know to talk about them instead of praying for them. My God, my God. But this one statement is true. This provides a way for the evil spirit to access. Access what? Your heart. Your mindset your ear gate, your eyes, your mouth, your heart, your life through jealousy, competition, or need for attention. You give the enemy power to access everything you are, your entire being, when you allow yourself to start gossiping about somebody else. If someone comes to you with some bad news about somebody's behavior, uh, they fail in sin, your response needs to be God's response. Then let's pray for them right now. Don't you take the same information and become toxic. Because you can take the same information and go tell two or three more people. Then they tell two or three more people in the congregation. For you know the whole church knows about the person's failure. Your best approach when a person comes to you is rebuke that unclean spirit that's bringing you gossip. And stand on the word of God. And say let's pray about them right now for their deliverance. Because the enemy loves confusion. A house divided against itself cannot stand. You got to wake up and pay attention. God keeps saying it. Wake up, pay attention. Something's going on in your life that's not of God. Wake up, pay attention. Something happened with your children. Watch what they're doing on social media. Pay attention. Young girl, 19 years old, met a guy on, on Facebook. Went on a date and the guy kills her. Happens all the time. Children meet somebody on Facebook not knowing it's a trap for sex trafficking. We need to wake up and pay attention and watch what our families are doing. Our children especially because they're vulnerable. They have peer pressure. They're being influenced by society and other peers to lead them down a pathway of destruction. All with the purpose of destroying them. Baal tries to seize authority illegitimately. You hear that? Baal tries to seize authority illegitimately. Tyre, where F. Baal or F. Baal was king, was a city that was never conquered by Israel. Isn't that something? Tyre was part of the promised land. But Israel never received the possession. Why is that? Why, why was it some places they weren't able to conquer? When God says it's in the promised land, it's yours. How come there are some habits in your life that's not of God and God says you can conquer it? 
How come we don't do it? The problem that happened with Israel was that they never surrendered to the Lord. They rebelled against God and something that God promised them they never received because of the wickedness of their heart was prone to go back to Egypt. It was historically noted as being a strong city, a stronghold. They were fortified. They were secured. And was also the merchant city for trade. So it was a wealthy place. A prosperous place. Wealth and power belonged to the city. Ethbel became king of Tyre only because he plotted murder and Ill Ill illegitimately seized the throne. So the king of that city, he did a malicious thing to kill that king, to get that city. And he got it. No wonder Jezebel was so ruthlessly determined to seize everything she lusted after. No wonder you and I are so prone to go after the thing God said, don't go after, don't be with certain people in your life because we lust after it. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is the very thing that brings you to a place of denial and also self-destruction. She was following in her father's footsteps. Her daughter, too, suffered from this generational root. You hear that? Generational root. So from one generation to the next generation to the next generation was an evil spirit on that bloodline. And that same evil spirit was a controlling, manipulative spirit that would plot and plan evil towards somebody's demise to overpower them. So she had the same spirit her father had, so her daughter ended up having the same spirit on her. Both Jezebel and Athaliah followed Ethbel's lead by committing murder and illegitimately seizing the throne of Israel and Judah. They had the same spirit, the same conquering spirit of the enemy to plot and plan and overpower a throne illegally. Didn't have the right. It was not theirs to take. But because they wanted it so bad, they committed murder. How many times have you committed murder with your mouth? When you spoke against somebody because you wanted their position so bad in their job or in church, you wanted what they had so bad so you started speaking evil over them, even praying against them. You're murdering with your mouth. And God is saying tonight, let the Holy Spirit put a bit in your mouth and a bridle on your tongue, just like a horse. They put a bit in the horse's mouth and a bridle to guide them. God said, let the Holy Spirit tonight be your guide. I'm almost done, almost done for tonight. Let's go a little further. The evil stronghold behind Baal therefore promotes an illegitimate seize of authority. This is the same stronghold behind a governmental coup d'etat. The seizing of the throne or authority through death, manipulation, and or control. The same spirit is at work in the church today to overpower and dethrone your shepherd. To go against your leadership to wreak havoc in the house of God, to bring toxicity into the place of God's house of worship, to bring poison to everybody that's in there to destroy them. The reason why you got so many people in the house of God always feuding with each other because of little rumors or they just don't like somebody because the way they looked at them. Or I wasn't greeted at the door when I came in. So I, I plot and plan for the demise because I don't like what they did. I have actually spoken 
with a male pastor who confessed that he knew of females in their congregation who prayed the pastor's wife would die. This was how much they wanted to become the next Mrs. Pastor of the congregation. Isn't that something? You, you want something so bad and you hurt somebody to get it. So you set them up for destruction. You cause people to go against them in the streets just so you can get their position. When Jezebel arises within a family, it seeks to usurp authority. In a business, it seeks power and manipulates to gain financial control. In a church, it seeks position and power and it gossips, it manipulates, and even lies to gain spiritual authority. In a local community, the self-promoting spirit runs for political office with intent to gain authority and status. Ain't that something? In all levels of government, the demonic forces attempt to attain power for selfish gain and change law to serve idolatrous beliefs. That's how bad the enemy wants to be in the control. He wants to control everybody. He wants to control the community. You know, in colonies, there are communities. And in communities, there are neighborhoods. If he can get the colony one at a time, he can control the whole city. So his whole purpose, his M.O., is to get to the head of the city. The mayors and the, the aldermen and the governors and, and the congressmen. He can get to those hierarchy positions. <coughs> The reason the word of God said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against, but against principalities and powers, roots of darkness of this age, and spiritual wickedness in high places, because those are hierarchy positions. Those are people are in authority. The one who make rules and, 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 and government decisions. They make the laws and decrees. The people in the hierarchy positions. And the enemy knows I can get to the head who makes the the laws and decrees, I can get the order to make it do what I want to do to influence a whole colony to destroy everybody, to get them to my mind binding spirit, my mind binding spirit, to serve the laws of my idolatrous worship. The demonic power of Jezebel, therefore, is the stronghold influencing the immorality in government, wickedness, immorality is wickedness. Breaking rules, breaking laws, which leads to ungodly laws such as legalized abortion, same sex marriage, and abolishing prayer in schools. Have we just witnessed this in the last few years? They took away the abortion laws, they, they got self same marriages. This, all this stuff and, and abolishing prayers in the schools and all this stuff was all of the plan of the enemy. If he got to the government, got to the president who's over the governments to make a foolish decision against God's law to impact the whole world the devil tries to persuade us about our leadership rather than take spiritual responsibility and action. We need to take responsibility for our actions and for our spiritual decisions. We will gain more spiritual ground if we would pray for God's divine government to be manifest upon the earth instead of murmuring and complaining about the economy and political policies. We need to pray that God's anointing was sent forth the prophetic anointing into the government arena, to the president, to the aldermen, to the mayors, the congressmen, the senators, all those people in authority to speak God's prophetic word 
to give them wisdom to make godly decisions for our nation, our cities, our communities. It is God's government. He does not come into agreement with our political structure. He requires us to agree with him and his divine order. You hear that? You got to come into agreement to decide within yourself, I'm going to follow glory to God, God's government, his rule, his order, his decision. I'm going to follow the Holy Spirit and let him lead God me, direct me in the way of truth and way of righteousness that everything I do, I do to promote God's kingdom in the earth. Any political attempt to overthrow what he has ordained in government is a Jezebel assignment of immorality and illegitimate authority. We need to pray against Jezebel's spirit in, in the government. Pray against the immorality and the illegitimate authority. Pray against it. Rebuke those unclean spirits. When God put it on your mind to pray, pray about our government. Pray that they hear from God, that God will turn, cause their hearts to turn towards him, to seek his face, because the government needs to know God. Because they're the ones that have the major influence of our, our nation. And if we get to the government with God's word, cause their hearts to be surrendered to God, we can change the nation. The reason God says, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. So then while we're here from heaven, forgive their sins and heal the land. Isn't our land in need of healing today? God is speaking tonight. We got to get back to the place where we hear the voice of God. That we get to pray for a unified body. Because the church is so divided. This fellowship no one wants to commune with this other fellowship. Presbyterians, the Lutheran, the Catholic, Baptist, Methodist. All the religions against each other. Church of God in Christ. Apostolic ministries. Everybody against each other. Because they feel their religion is right. There's only one relationship God is looking for. It's his bride without a spot or wrinkle. Who is the body of Christ? He don't care about your title. He don't care about your denomination. He don't care about your religious system. He cares about the heart of the people. Return to him to get to seek his faith and pray and come back together in one accord. That's what God is looking for. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, I worship you. I praise you, Lord God. I give you glory, God, right now. Father, let your will be done in our lives, God. We rebuke the devourer, God. We come against the religious systems of the heart and mind of the world. Oh God, we speak life, oh God, where there's death taking place on your people's hearts, oh God. Call them to live in the word of God. Father, let your spirit fall afresh upon us. Change us from the inside out. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, have your way in our lives, oh God. Break the strongholds off our minds and our hearts, oh God, that we no longer follow after lives of idol worship or following the spirit of Jezebel. But we hear your voice speaking, God. Convict us in our hearts, God. In the areas of our lives, we know we've been selfish. The areas we know we've been rebellious. The areas we know we've been stubborn and prideful, God. Those areas we know we've been holding on to sin, God. <coughs> Convict us. Prune us. Purify us. Saturate us. Make us holy as you're holy. But most of all, God, forgive us for our sins and iniquity and purify us in your blood. Clean us up, God. We have no longer, Father God, the residue of sin, the stench of sin and iniquity in our hearts, oh God, that wickedness, oh God, but we thank you, oh God, that we're being sanctified through the power of the Holy Spirit. That we're coming to you, God, with hearts being washed clean from an evil conscience. 
that we're hearing your voice to be sprinkled with clean water, that we can be cleansed by the words you spoke to us, God. And we know, oh God, that we have been born again and saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost and not a religious statement, God. Just to say it as a cliche, but we're saying it from our hearts to know that I've been born again. And filled with the power and the influence and the leadership of the Holy Spirit that you guide us every day, oh God, in your pathway, in your will, in your plan, your purpose for our lives. And I thank you, Lord God, that it give us boldness, God, to speak your word to those who are sinners, God, who we've seen in our pathway, those we pass in the streets, those we see in the grocery stores, God, and shopping centers. Give us bold to speak your word to probably the gospel. They have the power to save their souls that they would be born again. And I thank you, Lord God, for hearing us, understanding us, and drawing us into your presence like never before, that we get into our secret clauses, God, that we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we get to that place, oh God, of spending time in your presence, that we can hear from you, God, a rainbow word of God, to change the trajectory of our mindset about ourselves and other people, God, but we speak life to those, oh God, we meet in our destiny, God, those we come in contact with, we speak the word of life, oh God, to help them live and not die and declare the works of God. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. I'm stirred up, y'all. I'm so stirred up today. It, it's just the power of God. It's the power of God. I spend time in God's presence today, and I haven't turned to the television. I just listen to the worship music today and just feel my spirit. I read the scriptures, read in my books today, and, and it just felt God just pouring into me the revelation from his word to teach this tonight. Because we got to be bold enough to teach. There's eight chapters in this book. It's eight chapters. If you ever got that book, you need to get that book and read it. There's eight chapters in that book. But those eight chapters are powerful chapters. And they will liberate your mind. You know why you get depressed? You know why you find yourself getting into a dark place and you feel like you want to be alone, you feel like nobody cares, you feel abandoned, because you got disconnected from the telephone line. God has a telephone line that's connected to you. It's the frequency of the Holy Spirit. He never not answers a call. He always answers a call. He always hears you when you call him in faith. The key is, where is your faith? Jesus asked his disciples many times, where is your faith? Do you have the God kind of faith that when I call on him, he's going to answer me? Are you coming as a whimperer? Not with boldness or confidence about what you're praying for. Because God ain't looking for that. He's looking for somebody who come boldly before the throne of grace. Say, God, my daddy is in the hospital. My dad was sick with COVID. And God, I want you to heal him. You know what? My dad got out of the hospital today. I'm not even there in Gary where he is. But I believe God is getting out of the hospital. He got out of the hospital and the devil tried again. Afflict him with a seizure. Because the devil is not giving up on you. Just because you are a man of God, a woman of God, a child of God, the devil's not going to quit trying to attack you to make you give up on trusting God. He's going to do everything in his power to try to make you stop serving your God. But you got to make a decision in yourself. I do depression a lot. Y'all don't know that. I never told too many people about that. Every time I get into depression, I hear a scripture come into my mind. Every time I feel lonely, I hear a scripture Come into my spirit to take away the loneliness. Every time I feel like God is not there, I hear a worship song on the radio that tells me that God is still there. Because God reassures us 
Because we know we get weak in our flesh. I'm just keeping it real. We, get, we, we keep this God. We keep it to God tonight. We get to the place sometimes. We get weak. Because we're humans. No excuse. You hear that? No excuse. Just because you get weak, it's not an excuse to give up on God. It's a thought from the enemy to deter you from hearing God's voice. But God is still speaking. And God will send somebody in your life at the right time or speak a word into your spirit at the right time and draw you back to him. In that place where you feel like you're in despair, about to give up, lose hope, and you want to commit suicide, want to go drink a whole lot of alcohol, just get yourself drunk to get out of character. Go smoke your blunts and your weed, your crack, all this stuff. Those are symptoms of the enemy to pacify your, your symptoms. I mean, solutions of the enemy to pacify your symptoms. The remedy to your symptoms is the Holy Spirit through the Word of God that has the ability to change your mindset right at that moment to think about who you are in Christ Jesus, to bring you back to the place you begin to believe in yourself that I am a child of God because I have the I am who's living inside of me through Jesus Christ my Lord. And every time you trust God's word, God shows up in a supernatural way in a quiet place. If you don't believe it, read the story by Ezekiel. I mean, <clears throat> Elijah, by Elijah. Elijah, when he got a contract against his life through Jezebel, he went and hid himself in a cave. He was, he was defeated. He felt defeated. He felt hopeless. And God sent the whirlwind. He's an earthquake. But God was not in any of those things. He spoke to him in a still, small voice and gave him instructions to encourage him and restore him at that moment with power from the word of God. So I encourage you tonight, get in your word, not the Holy Spirit, to lead God, direct you today from this day forward. No matter what your habit is, if you know it ain't of God, rebuke that thing, let it go. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Let God cleanse and purge you from it. Every day I'm going through purging. And I receive it by faith. Because we don't have to be in bondage. We choose to be in bondage. I'm trying to quit, but God is speaking tonight. Because somebody needs to hear this. You put yourself in bondage. And God is trying to set you free. But there's a resistance. You send those resistance bands, they keep in therapy. They said, take these bands, they got a yellow, a green, a red, a blue. And then for each strength, each one have a different strength. And when you graduate from one level to the next level, to the next level, you get to the strongest one, and they tell you how to use that too. We have to allow the Spirit of God give us a resistance band in the Spirit to resist the enemy steadfast in the faith Submit to God. The devil will flee from you. So I encourage you these words tonight. No matter where you are, no matter how bad, how bad you had that habit, how long you had that habit, God can break it. Only if you're willing to say, Lord, here I am. I surrender. My habit my emotions, my will, my messed up mindset, my broken heart. I'm sure you might be in a broken marriage, broken relationship, doesn't matter what it is. God says tonight, are you willing to surrender? Because I can heal that area. I can heal your body. You might have been afflicted. And you wonder like, why am I still afflicted? How come this sickness will leave my body? Sometimes because of rebellion. People don't realize that your sickness will keep you in rebellion. Because God allows you to be afflicted by the enemy when you rebel. And you stay in it longer than God intended you to stay in it because you will repent. But if you repent and allow the Lord to come into your heart, He will deliver you. He will set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit 
because he loves and he cares for you. So I want you to pray this prayer with me tonight. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you, Lord God, acknowledging that I have sinned against you and against heaven. I ask you, Lord God, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, the known sins and unknown sins, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come into my heart. Restore me. Save me from not saved, and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, God heard you. Now you're held accountable because you spoke it out of your mouth. And God's going to say you're going to be judged by every idle word that you speak out of your mouth. So if you spoke that prayer tonight and you believe that prayer, guess what? You just got restored. If you wasn't saved, you just got saved. If you was rebellious and the backslide, you just got restored back in your relationship. Because God loves you so much. But I pray you continue to be encouraged. They decide about Jesus. Know that God loves you. He cares about you. I love you too. And I pray you get in your word. Go back and listen to this video again. It'll be on YouTube. If you don't have, some people don't have Facebook, share this video with somebody else. I'm going to put it on YouTube tonight. You better share this video with somebody you know that needs to hear this. And I guarantee when you obey God and share the word of God with somebody that needs to hear it, change is coming in that person's life and your life. And it's going to make you even better in your relationship with God because of your obedience. Amen. Thank everyone for coming on tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I see quite a few of you on tonight. Thank you for tuning in. I pray that something has blessed you in this word tonight that provoke you to righteousness. It has to provoke you. Sometimes God provoke us to act right. And you need to get the spirit to act right. Let the Spirit, Holy Spirit provoke you to do what's right. And I guarantee when you walk by faith and not by sight, you'll be glorifying God every day of your life. Put on your full armor. I'm going to tell you another point I found out recently. When you put on the full armor of God, don't take it off. Keep it on. Even when you lie down, keep that armor on you. Because the enemy attacking you to sleep sometimes. But God says put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. When you put your armor on, you will stand victorious and strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Amen. I pray God bless you tonight. Amen. God bless you, Priscilla. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you, love. Amen. Pastor Denise and Devil Shonda, Minister Eric, God bless you. Shonda, God bless you. Amen. Any name I fail to mention, God bless you for tuning in tonight as well. Will you all stay excited about the word, getting your word. Study, show yourself approved in the God and work when you not be ashamed. But rightly divide the word of truth. And I guarantee you, you divide that word of truth, the word will come alive to you and you'll find yourself living based by the leadership of the word of God. God bless you, reader. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for tuning in, my, my friend. Amen. But I pray you stay excited. Stay excited about the word of God. Stay excited about your relationship with God. Share the good news. Share the good news of the gospel. People need to hear this word. We need to share the word. Amen. The Lord says the same. We will resume again next week, Tuesday. We're going to talk about Baal promotes a religious spirit. Now that's going to be good. You thought this was good tonight? Wait till I start talking about the religious spirit. Because there's something we all need to hear about. But I pray you continue to walk by faith and not by sight. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. May the Lord give you peace. May the Lord turn his face towards you. You have a great night. Till next week. Shalom. Man, man.